Hey, welcome back, Mobility Wad. We wanted to film a quick addendum to our jump rope work because I want to give you guys a quick differential diagnosis. Because one of the things that we've been talking about today is the shoulder position. So stop. Oh, I caught him. What position is he in? Thumbs pointed. Can't see the rhomboid and trap bulk. Turn around for us. I should see his rhomboid and trap bulk all the time. So I can ask the question, is it just pattern resting behavior or is this something tight and restricted? So I should always see how massive and jacked you are in this position versus, go oh, pinche. And you can see the tissue hinge that develops as the head breaks, right? Carl's idea is that if I can see a wrinkle in your neck, this is a problem always. So getting organized in the shoulder, his resting state is never organized. He has to split with his head. Head should be here. There's that resting position. Now, one of the differential diagnosis pieces we're going to do is go ahead and don't jump with the jump rope real quick and show me that you can go to that triple extended position. Point your toes and strap them down. Okay, so suddenly, what's happening is I have good motion through the spine, as in none. Actually, and really point the toe. Show me what's up. Boom. Beautiful position. So that's better. So that's changed. So what have I taken away? The question, or the answer is, his shoulder. Now, because his default is to generate force here, it's actually almost impossible to double under with your shoulders in this position. Because I can't create the stability, the motion, and maintain the spine. So what ends up happening is I make a downstream compromise because of the shoulder mechanic. And we see this all the time expressed in the rest of the body, but in this position, if he can't get organized enough to maintain that stability, he won't be able to be stable. He ends up parking his shoulders into that default position, and you just watch the difference as soon as he's spinning. Go ahead and spin the jumper up again. And so we know that he's not maybe something downstream. He was, he was able to do that, but as soon as we see him working in this unstable shoulder position, he defaults back into that weird pull. And that's because that shoulder comes forward, he ends up short of the anterior hip, and this is that relationship. And so one of the things that we're always going to hammer you on is do you have full capacity of your body upstream and downstream? And you've got to start thinking about having both because one influences the other. Mobility Wad. See you tomorrow.